Welcome to MCAS TV. Uh, 10 minutes with hyaluronic acid. I'm here with oral and maxiofacial surgeon Nelly Gauthier from France and Hema Sundaran, dermatologist from the United States. And we're going to be talking about a very hot topic, hyaluronic acid. And just, just to preface this, HA was approved by the FDA in 2003 and is the number one injectable for adding fullness to the face reducing the prominence of wrinkles. And I just want to ask my first question to, to Dr. Sundaram, is there one type or many types of HA products? Well, that's an interesting question, Pamela. Um, hyaluronic acid is a family of fillers. And uh, within that, we have different types. So we can divide them up based on concentration. Most of the products we're using in practice are high concentration products. And we understand that's going to make them last for a long time. We do have one low concentration product. What really is a focus of interest now is that we are learning more about the structure of different HAs. So that different HAs are manufactured in a different manner. They have different degrees of cross-linking, modification, and so on and so forth. And that leads them to have different properties. Some HA fillers are firmer because they have more elasticity. Some are softer because they have low elasticity. Mm -hmm. Some HA fillers don't spread out much because their viscosity is high. Some HA fillers spread out quite a bit because they have a low viscosity. And now we are also learning that there are two other properties that make HA fillers different. Cohesivity, which is how well the filler sticks together. And plasticity, which is how well the filler can be molded. Now, now in the United States, there are three HAs registered. Yet in Europe, there are, I think, more than 100. Uh, okay. Why is that? Easily. Uh, I, I think the regulation is different in France and in Europe. Uh, they have maybe less difficulty obtaining the um, marketing um, approval. And I guess that's the difference. And there's a lot of companies, there's a lot of business, there's a lot of demands. And um, so well, that's thing, why. And, uh, Dr. Sundram, where do you or what do you prefer to treat with HA? And where are you getting the best results? Well, what we have to do is understand what fillers can be used for, what HA can be used for. It's the most versatile type of filler, in my opinion. It gives great results. They're predictable. They are immediate. So we can see right away what we are achieving. And of course, HA is completely reversible, which is a huge benefit, because it means we can fine tune or even reverse the results of a treatment if we uh, feel that that is the best option mm -hmm. for the patient. Now, where I am seeing hyaluronic acid being used is firstly for um, the aging process, for rejuvenation of the face, and increasingly for rejuvenation of areas off the face, uh, such as the, the hands, the neck, the décolleté, and uh, even um, other areas elsewhere on the body. And we're moving towards viewing all these areas integratively. We're not just filling one wrinkle or filling nasolabial folds, we're seeing the whole face and volumizing in three dimensions. As a complete package. Absolutely, <laughs> Pamela, in, in three dimensions. We also now are using HAs to enhance. Younger patients, for instance, may have, um, Asian patients, for instance, like to do forehead enhancement. Mm -hmm. HAs can be used to improve the shape of the nose non -surgically. So not just for the aging process, it also has reconstructive. So you're seeing all ages of patients coming yes, in? Yes, basically, whether the patient is older or the patient is younger, what we're aiming to do is to revert the face or to bring the face towards more ideal contours. Mm -hmm. And what are the best techniques for you? The, do you agree? Is there a French touch, an American touch? I have a French doctor, an American doctor. Can we talk about, is there a... Do you have well, a different technique than I the Americans? Think, I think there's something that the French people have. They like their identity. They do not like to look alike. Uh, they really are looking for originality. So I think that's the difference because maybe in America we see more, uh, I would say, uniform uh, rejuvenation. 
like everyone is doing this, everyone is doing the same thing, which is almost uh, making patients look alike. Well, in France, that you, you, you cannot see that. If you look like someone else, then you look bad. Mm -mm -mm. So you do it's a have, negative. it's very negative. It's, it's, re, it's felt negatively. I don't want to start a diplomatic incident, uh -huh. but, but do you agree? <laughs> no, we, we have a great aunt en Cordial here. Actually, oh, I, yes. I grew up in Europe. So uh, what I will say is that it's, uh, it's a little bit misleading just to look at the images of cosmetic surgery that we see from the American newspapers and the American and magazines, because that is not typical of what skilled uh, aesthetic specialists are doing in their practices. And certainly I strive, I completely agree with Dr. Gautier, I'm striving also for an individual look for all my patients. There are no cookie cutter templates. We have to look at the patient's individual facial structure, the patient's objectives, and how those can be best achieved. And ultimately, if anyone realizes that the patient has had something done, that's a failure on yeah, our part. Yeah, that's the we want patients to look completely natural. Right. And I am based in Washington, D.C. This is on the East Coast of America, and the look is very understated. It's very subtle there, perhaps because we are closer to Europe yeah. than, than California. So if you look at my patients, I, I think that they look very natural, and they certainly have been rejuvenated in an individual manner. Right, right. And... and if I may elaborate, yeah. if there is a difference, I don't know if there is any difference between a French touch and American touch. I think each of us has our own touch uh, based on what we feel we can bring to the patient in terms of rejuvenation. Uh, so my touch, I would say, and I don't know if it's an American touch, <laughs> is that I try and incorporate science into what I'm doing. Uh, one of my real passions is to study the science of fillers and then to connect that through to clinical outcomes. Yeah. so that I can select the right products, the right techniques, the right implantation depths, even select between blunt cannulas and sharp needles based mm -hmm. on the properties of the fillers. As yes, we were talking earlier about the, the sandwich technique. and Yes, layered rejuvenation because volume loss is multi-level. So rejuvenation should also be at multiple at multi levels. levels. Uh, yeah. If if I may, if there's no science, there's no beauty. No. So it's impossible because beauty comes from the anatomy, and it, it has to be scientific. Otherwise, it's Ab just absolutely. a total failure. Absolutely. And and just before you, we were speaking about uh, lipofilling. Lipofilling or HA? I say both. Yes, both. Uh, I would say both too. Uh, it, it depends both in combination, on the, yes. depending on. It depends on yes. the. It, it depends on the uh, on the need of the patient and what she's willing to do or he is willing to do because we have a lot of men too, but it depends on what they are willing to do. Are they willing to do something more invasive like lipofilling mm -hmm. or less invasive like injectables? So it's it's something we have to discuss. I have one final question. Can I make oh, yes, on the please, please. So with lipofilling, you know, the, uh, the big interest now is whether uh, we can combine fat and hyaluronic acid, inject them both, and get a synergy and uh, a better result through both of them. Generally speaking, for me, when patients are having lipofilling, if they need a volume greater than about five or six cc's of volume restoration, it's very advantageous to include fat. Yeah. Fat can potentially optimize the results, even prolong the longevity of hyaluronic acid. Fat is a very good starting point for every patient as a foundation for volume restoration, and then we can build with hyaluronic acid in the more superficial levels. So it's a good partnership. It's a beautiful partnership. One last I question agree. because we're running out of time, but. What are the new techniques in the injection process? Oh, that, that's the cannula and the, the needle and, and both. And how, how do you see in, in the future, there are a lot of innovations coming out in, in their techniques. In the I think we're going to improve the techniques. We're going to improve the tools with which we inject. Uh, we're going to improve the material itself. The HA are going to be uh, more uh, long-lasting and uh, a better feeling, more adapted to contour, to volume. I think there's a lot of progress and a lot of technical progress on the way. Thank you. Thank you very much, both of you. And I'm thrilled to have two women on the panel, the first of the day. Thank you. Thank you.